back here at home today, an entire nation remembered a dream that changed America. Fifty years ago, Dr. Martin Luther King stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial to preach his message of racial equality. And today, the first African-American president walked those same steps as thousands of people sat in the rain to honor the largest civil rights gathering in the history of this country all those years ago. And our team coverage tonight begins with ABC's Byron Pitts at the Lincoln Memorial. Standing the exact spot Reverend King stood to address the plot of the American Negro 50 years ago. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Today, President Obama spoke to the needs of the nation. The test was not and never has been whether the doors of opportunity are cracked a bit wider for a few. It was whether our economic system provides a fair shot for the many. It was the rarest of moments in American history, three American presidents together to remember a king. The choice remains as it was on that distant summer day 50 years ago. Cooperate and thrive, or fight with each other and fall behind. 50 years ago today, a record quarter million people endured the August heat and the humiliation of segregation to come to Washington, put on their Sunday best to say and dignify solidarity, America must change. Today, the crowd was much smaller, an estimated 30,000. The dress far more casually. The sense of history still strong. There were stars on stage. Speaker after speaker touched upon the words that changed American history. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. King's dream may not yet be fulfilled, but the president insisted America is on its way. To dismiss the magnitude of this progress, to suggest, as some sometimes do, that little has changed, that dishonor is the courage and the sacrifice of those who paid the price to march in those years. Everyone today, including President Obama, was short on specifics. But like many of the feel-good speeches 50 years ago, the hard work goes on elsewhere. Diane? It does, Byron. And seeing all those families gathered in Washington today reminds everyone how much children have to learn about those who open the doors for them. Now, ABC's Pierre Thomas was there and brings us what has been achieved and what is still to be done. Some came to reflect on the African-American journey. Really, it's a rededication of myself to what I call the struggle. Some came for their children to better understand their heritage. They're supposed to dream it, they're supposed to believe in it, and then you have to act it. And some came to revisit the pain of their forefathers. I got really emotional just knowing what my mother and the rest of the people her age were experiencing. I have a dream today. But how much of Dr. King's dream has been realized? The country is clearly more colorblind, with blacks and whites living and working side by side. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. In 1963, only 25% of African Americans finished high school. Today, more than 87% of blacks graduate. But are we post-racial? The facts suggest not. The Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty. In 1963, the number of blacks living in poverty was roughly 50%. The number now stands at 28%. Black unemployment is nearly twice as high as white unemployment. Enough is enough, and let's Let's get on to the dream. Andrew Young was in the trenches with Dr. King. What would Dr. King be fighting for today? He had the audacity to believe every child should have enough to eat and enough education. Dr. King's words so many years ago still ring true. 1963 is not an end, but a beginning. 50 years later, Diane, the end is not yet in sight. Well, Pierre, it was great to have you reporting in today on this historic and memorable day. Thank you. 
That is the crowd gathered at the Washington Monument today to remember the electrifying speech 50 years ago. We all know Dr. Martin Luther King was a towering force in civil rights, but he was also a man under pressure to say the words that would change minds and lift souls. It was all written out, but did you know that the words, I have a dream, appear nowhere on those pages? His advisors said he should be trying something new. So how did it happen? At the feet of Abraham Lincoln, they sang and they waited. Offstage, the 34-year-old Reverend Martin Luther King seemed a little tired as he told ABC News he hoped to reach the hearts of good people of all races everywhere. We'll have their consciences aroused as a result of this disciplined, dignified, yet determined uh, protest and demand for freedom now. But at first, when King walked to the podium, he seemed restrained and read from a prepared speech. Suddenly, singer Mahalia Jackson burst forth. I see her. I see her when I hear, when her voice comes, my attention's turned, and I see her say, tell him about the dream, Martin. Tell him about the dream. The dream, his dream. It was a refrain he'd been using in speeches on the road, but it was not part of the speech he'd prepared for that day. His advisors had told him he needed something new. But suddenly... I still have a dream. Yes. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. When I heard him say, I have a dream, I said, all oh, expletive deleted, because we had been up and down the steps all night working on this alternate ending climax. Advisor Wyatt T. Walker, who said they all recognized that Dr. King was now alive, transformed. We were all wrong. Little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. So did Gunny Gundrum. That's him in the park ranger hat guarding the podium. It was not just for uh, black people. It was trying to raise all, all people up, all mankind. So did the late civil rights leader Dorothy Height. That's her in the hat. When he lifted his arms, you felt that he was taking us all in. When we let it ring. And as he did, he ended with the words of an old hymn he used to sing. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. On one day, one man with a dream lifting a nation on the winds of hope and history. We thank you for watching, and we'll leave you now with some of the sights and sounds of this profound anniversary. Good night.